As we recognize May as Mental Health Awareness Month, this morning Dr. Joselle Miller will talk about how her life experiences helped in writing her book and how we ourselves can create our own bounce back effect. Dr. Joselle Miller from St. Vincent is the author of I Am the Most Powerful Words You Can Ever Say to Yourself and Unstuck creating your bounce back effect this morning we're chatting about the second one creating your bounce back effect unstuck good morning to you dr miller good morning how are thank you thank you so much for joining us this morning how are you i'm good and you so far so good you know and i'm really curious about uh you know which life experiences brought you to this book unstuck creating your bounce back effect well there have been so many life experiences um First and foremost, starting with uh, a divorce that, um, you know, I grew up in church, my mom being my pastor for all of my, my years and ended up having a divorce, um, being faced with a lot of the scrutiny from the church. Mm -hmm. And then um, following that, it would have been the passing of my mom. My mom was diagnosed with a terminal illness in um, just a year after that divorce. And then following that, my dad was also diagnosed and both would have succumbed to their illnesses. And it has been a series of different things, not just being divorced or um, grief from the death of a loved one, but betrayals and different, um, you know, unfortunate life experiences. And I realized that it is not um, something that is just unique to myself, but a lot of persons will have encountered so many similar situations. And when you go through such hardships, it's easy for persons to become stuck and become somewhat jaded to the point that they can't move on and lead a successful life. So this book really would have been um, an inspiration first to myself so that I, I looked at all of the things that worked for me and I put it all together, collated it so that persons can have different steps that they can utilize as well to help to make them unstuck in their own situations. How do you, how do you begin to overcome being stuck in the first place? Like what is the, what, what would you say was the process that you had to go through? Well, one, one thing first, you must realize that you are stuck. I think often the problem is that persons are not very mindful that they are probably in a situation where there is no progress, there's no change. And once you become stagnated, then that's the process where you actually begin to die. Maybe not physically, but mentally, emotionally. So first realizing that you are in a situation that is not productive, that is not yielding any benefits towards you progressing in terms of your goals, your dreams, and your aspirations. The other thing is, that we have to take accountability and ownership for our actions. Because even though certain things may have happened, you have to now assess whether or not you are also instrumental in causing some of the things that may have transpired in your life. So when you're at the point of taking ownership and accountability, you're looking inwardly. Often it's easier to look out and to blame every other person. But first you have to take that responsibility of looking at yourself. After you have done that and you have given yourself enough grace to forgive yourself, you have to start identifying what are those patterns, what are the trends in your life. Because we tend to do the same things over and over again, expecting different results. And until we get to the point of understanding that that is definitely the definition of insanity, we are not getting anywhere. So you have to start now looking at all of the patterns and the things that you need to break. You need to identify even if there are friendships, relationships, whatever that you need to sever in order for you to move forward. Dr. And Miller. of course, my faith was something that was very significant to me. And identifying your source, knowing the reason why you were mm. created. And once you have that understanding that there is purpose to your life, then you take nothing for granted. You see, Dr. Miller, this morning, uh, you, you mentioned your, your background in the church. You mentioned, mentioned your faith. And I feel like you're preaching this morning because you're saying something. <laughs> here, and some of my co-hosts going, yes, preach. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I want to I want to also discuss the parts of the journey because I mean you, you made it sound very nice and progressive, but along that same journey that you just described, there'd be some pitfalls. What what are some of the things that we can look out for in this journey, in this mental journey, to 
to say, all right, you know, this might be a, a, a thing to watch out for, but you can't overcome it. Well, one of the things, being mindful of your thought processes, often we are very aware of what we are consciously seeing or hearing. But just, I often tell persons when I, I operate in the clinic, I said, listen, there are things that are subconsciously still going on in the background, literally like when you have your phone and there are different apps that are still running. So you have to now <laughs> take the time to be so mindful of what your thought processes are. And when you are able to basically zone in a little bit more, you are mindful of what your triggers are. Mm. Now, it is not always easy because at the end of the day, we are human beings and we are going to succumb sometimes to emotions. We are going to succumb to fear. We are going to um, give in sometimes to all of the negative energies around us. So it's important then for you to also have a support system and an accountability person that can help to bring you out of the rut. Because there were moments when I within myself felt like, listen, I can't do this. I can't be bothered anymore. I'm just done. But then if you have persons who would literally not allow you to go down, but they will remind you of... Um, you know, all of the good things around you, help you to be grateful, help you to start seeing your life from a different lens, it is very useful. But if everybody around you is also pouring into the negative energy, then it's going to be even more difficult. It certainly would be. And speaking of that, uh, that difficulty, uh, some people feel like they, they get silenced or they get shamed into being, into being quiet. Uh, so they don't even mm -hmm. get to begin that that healing journey. How do you uh, how do you recommend that they they start the process of moving past that silence and that shame to begin the healing? Yeah. So one of the things, actually speaking out, may be very difficult for a lot of persons because, um, yes, again, the critical nature, and especially I I zone in a bit more on men because. I find that for a lot of men, they're afraid to become vulnerable because, and perhaps it's the thing with women as well, that even as a man opens, opens up and is a bit vulnerable and expressive of how he's feeling and what is going on, that same information sometimes can be weaponized. Mm -hmm. And a lot of persons are fearful. But one of the things I will say, even before you can voice it, write it. Begin pouring out on paper. So that process in itself helps helps to re, you know, basically reduce some of the anxiety that you have on the inside. We have to trust someone. So at some point, you literally will have to seek out professional help or um, if there is no support system around you, then go the professional route and get someone who can listen to you in an independent, objective, professional way to help you to guide the process. But the first instance may be that you literally have to write about what is going on with you. Hmm. Love, loving the advice this morning. I want one more piece of advice before, before we wrap up this morning, Doc. And that is, oftentimes we hear people say, hurt people, hurt people. But yes. I, I know that hurt people can also help to heal people. Would you agree? It all depends. It all depends. Because um, I can be hurt in one aspect of my life. Let's say I am dealing with the death of a loved one, but you are hurt as it relates to probably um, betrayal on the job. And I may be able to pour into that situation because it is something that maybe I overcame before. But if it is a similar hurt that we are dealing with, chances are it may be more difficult for that person to help you heal if they are also ruminating in their own pain. If they are also in a place where they are bleeding, chances are they're going to project that same negative um, energy or that pain hurt that they're feeling, they're going to project it onto your situation as well. So it all depends. And I think one of the things that persons typically do is that where we were hurt is where we are looking for our healing. But if you were just hurt or sabotage in a particular space, that's not the place that your healing is going to begin. Your realization of what has transpired is, is part of the beginning stage of your healing 
healing process. But if you are dependent on, let's say, somebody to say, I'm sorry, or somebody to come and be contrite just for you to be healed and willing to move on, then you you might find yourself stuck for a longer period. Because part of becoming unstuck is understanding that forgiveness is not about the other person. Forgiveness is about you and releasing yourself of the pain, the anguish, and, you know, whatever the situation is that you have been carrying for a while. Thank you so very much, Dr. Miller, for sharing this morning, for joining us, and congratulations on book number two. Uh, where can we get it, just quickly before we wrap up? It's on Amazon, so once you type in um, the name of the book or my name, you'll find it there. All right, beautiful. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, and do enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much for having me. Have a blessed day. Take care. Take care.